In this chapter, we're going to record a voice track, chop it up like we did with the clock sound effect, then assemble the best performance from what we recorded. Obviously, we use a microphone to record this voice. I'm using an MBOX 3 as my audio interface. Jump over to the Avid website. There's an interactive display of the MBOX 3. Pretty much every piece of Pro Tools hardware is available in this interface view. Up on the top here is the front. On the bottom is the back of the unit. And these are the Nutric connectors. These connectors will accept two mic inputs using XLR jacks and two inputs from unamplified sources using line level instruments. If your mic uses an XLR cable, plug it into the three pins of input one. Notice that input one is on the outside here, not the inside. There's really only one way that an XLR cable could go in all the way. On the front of the unit, make sure that the rear button is checked. You also have an option for plugging into the front, in which case you'd want the front button selected. If your mic needs phantom power, 48 volts, then push this button and it will light a bright red to let you know that there's signal passing through. Power on your mic after you plug it in and power it down before you unplug it. If your mic doesn't use an XLR cable and uses a standard quarter inch input, plug it in here into the middle of the Nutri connector. New boxes have a soft limiter and I like the sound of it a lot seems to solve a lot of the problems with overloading and distortion before they even occur. You should see a green light over here that's receiving your signal. So next we talk about levels. My experience is that the gain knob needs to be almost all the way up. So all the way up is going to get you to about 5 o'clock here, if we think of this as a clock face. 4 o'clock is about where I usually wind up setting mine. There's a little notch on here that will tell you where the setting is. And if you're on the left side of noon, you might not even get enough gain to light the green light. So why not just turn it all the way up? Well, you might not need that much signal. You'll be bringing up the background noise and you may introduce distortion into the signal. So let's jump back to Pro Tools. My microphone is plugged in and right now it's not receiving in Pro Tools until I activate the record button over here. And now you can hear kind of a doubled sound. You're hearing me speak, but you're also hearing it being processed in Pro Tools. I can turn that off by rerouting my output to a bus that isn't being used. And now you're back to the kind of voice that I had before. That's not something you want to do because you want to be able to hear the sound in Pro Tools. But I just didn't want you to have to listen to that doubled voice sound for the rest of this movie. So now we're talking about levels. I can actually get this all the way to the top. I don't want to scream into your ear, so I can make this. Wow, that soft limiter is doing a really good job of keeping the signal from peaking out. This is a pretty good level. Notice how I'm almost always at the top of the green, occasionally into the yellow, if I really try hard. I don't want a level that's down in here. That puts too much background noise into the signal. The signal and the noise are too close together. We want a nice ratio of signal to noise. Right now, the background noise, if I just stop talking for a second, is sort of way down in there. So that's a good signal against the background noise that's in the signal. Let's say there are three possible outcomes for your recording. Set the perfect level and you get a great recording. Two is that you set the level too low. You can adjust the gain of a recording later on, but you bring up the background noise along with the signal that you want. Outcome three is that you set the level too high and parts or all of your recording is distorted. There's really no good fix for this. Jumping to the mix window for a second using command equals. Lowering the fader just gives you less of that distorted signal, but it doesn't change the distortion. Jumping back to the edit window. So let's shoot for outcome one, where you set the perfect level and you get a great recording. One common mistake is asking your performer to give you a mic check using one level so that they walk up to the mic and go, testing, one, two, three, and then having them perform at a completely different level, either because they're excited or they're whispering. Always set your level to what you're actually planning to record. Room tone is the term for ambient sound in a recording. 
If we record in a tiled room, the hard reflections of that room will be captured by the mic and become part of our recording. It used to be we were stuck with that. There are some pretty good plugins now that can modify the room tone, but think of it this way. It's easy to take a dry vocal and put it into a setting like a tiled room or a cathedral, but it's very hard to take the room tone out of a recording, so be careful where you record. Two more things to mention as far as sound quality. Plosives. Sorry to do that to you, but I wanted you to experience that. P's and F's are the main culprits. And another thing to listen for is proximity effects. As you move the mic closer to the source, the lower frequencies become more dominant. So you don't just get more sound, you get a deeper sound too. I've created one mono audio track. I've named it AVO for announcer voiceover. I'm in record now. Here's my input. I'm sending to this output so that we don't hear that doubled voice sound. I've customized my timeline to show me minutes and seconds, but not all the other extraneous stuff that would just distract me. And I think we're ready to record. So in the next movie, we'll set up a cue.